So the first part of our question wants us to consider an object moving um, at an initial speed that collides with the second object at rest. And we're going to assume energy and momentum are conserved, so it's completely elastic. And we want to show that this velocity of the uh, initial object is v, and it's equal to m of the object moving minus m the object at rest times the initial velocity divided by m the object moving plus the m object at rest. So they use capital M and little m. This can get really confusing with the notation, so I'm going to use m1 and m2. So our incoming object is m1, and it has an initial velocity we'll call v0. And then the final uh, objects, m1 has final velocity v1, and m2 has final velocity v2. So there's our momentum conservation. Using the same concept, we have energy conservation, which is 1 half m1 v0 squared is equal to m1 uh, 1 half m1 v1 squared plus 1 half m2 v2 squared. So you'll notice in the energy conservation equation, there's a 1 half in front of all the terms. So we can just go ahead and cancel that out because if we divide through by 1 half, that all cancels. So again, M1 is our large capital M. Um, that's the same notation. And then M2 would be the little m in the notation given in the question. I just use M1 and M2 because capital M and then little m are hard to differentiate and can be confusing. So there's some pretty tedious algebra here, but it is just algebra. So let's go ahead and work through this a little bit. So first, let's put everything, uh, since our final answer is supposed to be in terms of the V1 and the V0, let's put everything um, equal to V2 and go ahead and cancel V2 out. So the momentum conservation from V2 gives us V2 is equal to um, M1 V0 minus M1 V1 divided by M2. And then from our energy conservation equation, we have V2 squared is equal to M1 V0 squared minus uh, M1 V1 squared divided by uh, M2. So let's go ahead and take the equation from momentum conservation of V2 and plug it in to the energy conservation V2. So let's take this equation here and plug it in here and set these equal to each other. So what we have, doing it on a new page, is M1 V0 minus M1 V1 all squared divided by V2 squared, or excuse me, divided by M2 squared. So that just come came from taking our V2 value from momentum and plugging it into our V2 value from energy. And then this is still equal to what V2 squared was equal to. So this is M1 V0 squared minus M1 V1 squared all divided by M2. So we can simplify a little bit. Um, this M2 value is going to cancel with the square Oh, sorry, this was supposed to be m2 squared, not m1. So it's going to cancel with the square of that m2 value. And putting everything on one side of the equation, so we're going to set it all equal to 0, we have um, m1 squared. So we're going to carry out the square here. So we have m1 squared divided by m2 v0 squared minus m1 squared divided by m2 v1 squared and then that's minus a negative uh, where those both values are negative so you multiply them together that becomes positive then we have minus m1 uh, squared over m2 v0 times v1 so that was just carrying out that square and then we're going to subtract over all the terms on this side of the equation and set everything equal to zero. So this is minus M1 V0 squared plus M1 V1 squared equals to zero. 
Okay, so at this stage, what I'm thinking is let's use the quadratic formula to solve for v not or to solve for v1. So we'll set it up um, to where all the like terms are together. So if you notice, we have m1 squared divided by m2 times v not squared, and we also have a minus m1 v not squared. So that'll be our v not squared. That that could be a v not squared term. We also have m1 squared divided by m2 times v1 squared, and then we have a minus m1 or we have a plus m1 v1 squared. So that's a v1 squared term. And since we're going to be solving for v1, we want to kind of put it into order um, of the of uh, representative of the v1 squared terms. So what we have here is m1 squared over m2 plus m1 is all multiplied by v1 squared. So I'm going to pull the v1 squared out front. And then we have minus m1 squared over m2 times v0 times v1. And then plus, we have m1 squared over m2 minus m1. And these are all multiplied by v0 squared, so I'll pull the v0 squared out. So what you might recognize here is this is in terms of uh, something we can solve with the quadratic formula in terms of v1. So what we have is this term here is a. This term here is b. And then this entire term here is c. So if we go to our quadratic formula, We'll do this on the next, start doing this on the next page. We have uh, v1 is equal to negative, and I'll keep things color coded, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. all divided by 2 times a, where again, there's our, our a is m1 squared divided by m2 plus m1, our b is m1 squared divided by m2 times v0, and our c is m1 squared divided by m2 minus m1 times v0 squared, that entire last term, because it doesn't contain any v1 value. Okay, so carrying this out, we find that v1, and after a little bit of simplification, can get a little tedious, but if you stick with it, it works. We find that this is indeed equal to m1 minus m2 times v0 divided by m1 plus m2. Where again, m1 was that capital M term, and m2 is a lowercase m term. So if you want to, you know, keep the same units or keep the same notation that was given in the problem. You can switch M1 to capital M and M2 to lowercase m. Um, but I, again, moved them to M1 and M2 to avoid confusion with capitals and lowercases. Now that we have that representation that we were asked to find for part A, we just simply have to plug values in. So for part A, it says, consider the moving object as an alpha particle and it's colliding with an electron at rest. So what we have here is V is equal to M1 is an alpha particle. So this is M alpha minus M2 is an electron. So this is ME multiplied by our value V naught, which we're told is 0.01 C. So this is 0.01 times the speed of light C divided by M alpha plus ME. So if you plug those values in and carry out this calculation, you find that this is equal to approximately 0 0.01 times the speed of light c. So it doesn't really change. For part b, we're going to do the same thing, but now it's colliding with a uh, gold nucleus. So v is equal to m alpha minus the mass of the gold nucleus, which we call m sub g. This is still multiplied by the uh, speed, which is 0 0.01 c. And then this is divided by... Uh, m alpha plus mg. 
So this time plugging these values in, we find that this is equal to negative, because mg is so large, it becomes negative 0 0.0096 times the speed of light c. And then for part c, it's a conceptual part. It says, uh, based on your answer, could an alpha particle be deflected backwards by hitting the electron in a gold atom? So not by hitting the nucleus of the gold atom, but by hitting the electron. But our answer is no, um, it can't be deflected backwards. Uh, this is because it would continue on with the same speed forward, according to our calculation. And that would be our answer for part C. So we can box that in.